One of the best ways to make a tube sock fit fairly well is to run Lycra along with the main yarn. I've been using some that was from commercial sock making. I also frequently use nice sock yarns that have a stretchy component. And in other videos, I've shown you how to use all of those. But I realized that in these times, that may not be an option. Shopping isn't what it was. So while cleaning up my workroom, look what I found. This is very thin beading elastic. And this movie is about experimenting with using that as the stretchy component. If I remember correctly, I originally bought this at Walmart. I have also seen it on eBay, so it is accessible. Here's the sock I made with it, and I found up some interesting things. This is basically the simple Simon sock from my book, Happy Hobby Socks. The book is aimed at hobby machines, of course, and the kinds of socks we can make on them. I do have another video on making simple Simon socks. So the emphasis in this video is on incorporating the stretchy beading elastic, but I will give you the numbers that I used because this is a different size and I know everybody's stuck at home and wants things to knit. In baby shoe sizes, this would fit a child who wears a two to three size shoe. This area has the elastic thread. I ran out about here. This area was knitted only with the DK weight yarn. The good news is that the beading elastic ran along with the main yarn just fine. Also good news is that it did significantly add stretch and resilience to the fabric. What's untested is whether it's comfortable in wear. I made this on my Artisan 70D mid-gauge machine by casting on 25 stitches using E-Wrap. I'm using the composite yarn here. I fed the two yarns through the same tension disc and into the carriage normally and let them feed from the floor, knitted slowly, and everything went fine. I knitted 35 plain rows like that at stitch size 7, and that is when my second yarn, the elastic yarn, ran out. And I thought, okay, well, we're at the point where the cuff and the heel are complete. So I turned the stitch size down to five and knitted the foot without any elastic addition. Now the simplified toe, transferring every fourth stitch to the next needle over and placing the empty needles out of work. Knit one row at the present stitch size, and then if your machine will permit it, reduce the stitch size substantially for the next row. A one to two whole number reduction. Now out of every group of three stitches that remain, transfer the center one to the next needle over and put the empties out of work. Knit four additional rows, reducing the stitch size as much as is possible and still knit smoothly every row. By the last row, I was at a very small stitch size. One is what I think I had, but it's going to vary a little bit with the machine. I was unable to make a further reduction for my last row, and that's fine. Thread the tail into a yarn needle and work it through every stitch in order so that we can remove all the stitches onto the yarn tail and use that tail to gather the toe closed. Secure the gathered end very tightly and use the remainder of the yarn tail to seam the edges of the work together. Along the edges of machine knitted work, you will find alternate knots and bars. Those are the terms generally used for the looser, easier to find edge stitches and the tighter knot like stitches that occur every other row. In the toe area, I typically seam every row together, whip stitching the pairs of stitches. After passing the toe, I work only into the knots. If you have another seam that you like better and lays flat, feel free to use it. But this is one that has worked for me, made comfortable seams, and not been overly tedious for a long time. In some of the other videos in this tube sock series, I show it in considerably more detail. 
Here's the finished sock, still attached to the waste yarn. All I have to do is remove it. Since I didn't use a row of ravel cord, just snipping it in a couple places allows me to pull it out. So the sock is finished, and a couple of interesting things to make note of. One, the gauge is almost the same top and bottom, even though partway through I turned down the stitch size to whole numbers. Of course, the goal was to match the gauge. So that's excellent news because we want the sock to appear to be the same size all the way down. However, you can see that the top fabric is denser because it's been pulled in by the elastic thread. In theory, this sock will stay on a baby more easily than an all plain yarn, no elastic sock because it'll hug the ankle better. But in actual fact, I have no baby to put it on. And this isn't the time to grow roaming the neighborhood looking to borrow one. I also don't have enough beading elastic to make myself a sock and try it out for comfort. So this is something for you to experiment with. You can let me know how it goes. In case the Happy Hobby Socks book interests you, I will place a link to where it may be found on my website in the program notes.